Hello and welcome back to Convert a Warm and Cheerful Design to HTML and CSS. We've covered chapters 1, Design the Site, Creating the Markup, and Slicing the Design. In chapter 4, today we are going to work with the 960 grid system and I'm going to give you a crash course on using it if you've never done it before. So we've already installed it, so you visit 960.gs and there's a download link at the top. All right, so let's go ahead and play around with it. And to do so, I'm going to create a new page so that we're not overriding what we've already worked with. So I'll create a new page and call it 960.html. Now, if you remember, we've already imported the necessary files. So if we go into our original file, you'll see that we imported on lines 13 through 16 the files that we need. So I'll yank these out, and let's go into our new project. So let's create a new area and paste those in like so. Okay, so the way we uh, instantiate the grid is you have to apply classes. That's all a framework is. Don't let a CSS framework confuse you in the same way that a JavaScript framework or a PHP framework might. A CSS framework is simply a collection of very helpful classes. So the 960 framework is for a 960 pixel website. So if we go back to our design, all we had to do was measure and we can see that if we measure from the beginning to the end, it's 960, and I probably mismeasured there. So, and we can also see that the designer used 24 column grid, and that's why we're referencing the 24 column version of 960 rather than the default 12 column. So let's say we're building a site and we want to go ahead and create our wrapper. Well, you would do that by applying a class of either container 12 or, in this case, container 24. So I'll do that right now, container 24. And within it, let's say we want a, well, let's keep it like that for now. And we'll say my container. Okay, so that alone, if we view this in the browser, what you're going to see here is that the text is centered. It's not all the way to the left. And if you want a better example of this, let's apply some simple styling and say container 24 background of a grayish color. And now you'll see that that takes up that entire width and that's 960 pixels. And the 960 framework will also set the margin left and the margin right to auto. So let's go ahead and take a look at what this is exactly doing. So let's go into our file, and you can see it's already been compressed, but, and you know what, why don't we copy all of this and prettify it, CSS beautify, see if we can find something online really quickly. All right, there we go, that's a little bit better. So you can see that the container 24, what that does is it sets the left and right margins to auto, and it applies a width, and that's all it does. Okay. Now it also sets a minimum width of 960 pixels to the body directly. Now we have all of these grids that we can play around with and that's what I want to focus on first. So the way you measure grids is if you have your design, you can say, all right, let's say in this case our navigation area. We can count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So that's about a 12 columns grid. So we could come back to our project and let's go within here and we'll say uh, let's create a nav area or let's just do a div for now and we're gonna also give it a class of grid 12 okay and we'll just write that to represent the navigation area so now if we go in here and we apply a background color and let's come back to our project and see what that does now you can see that the navigation area has been floated to the left. Now you might be noticing that the gray background disappeared and that's because everything is floated. So you can see right here, when you apply one of these grids and you have one through 24 of course, it sets its display to inline and this is done to fix some IE6 issues when you float elements. And it also applies a gutter, a five pixel worth of gutter on the left and right side. So when you float an element, the container may not take up any space. So for now, we could use the clear fix hack, or let's just set overflow to hidden. And if I come back to my project now, you'll see that's taking shape. So now let's say, let's come back and let's say we have our navigation area, and I want that to take up the entire width. 
Well, in that case, you could just delete this entirely because the default state of a block level element is to take up all its available space. All right, so now let's go and let's say we want our main content area. So we'll say div main, and within it we'll have a primary section. And let's say we want that to take up, let's go back to our project. Maybe we want it to take up uh, 18 columns. And then the aside will take up six, maybe. You can play around with it. So in that case, we would say grid 18. And then we'll also have a div sidebar. And that will have a class of grid 6. And 18 plus 6 adds up to 24, so we get our entire width. So let's stretch that out. And we'll say primary content sidebar content. All right, I'll save that and come back. And now you can see how easy it is to build these layouts. So let's go into our main section and apply a, a height just to give us something to work with. And now you can see what we're doing there. If you want to go to the sidebar, and we have primary. We're just applying arbitrary background colors just so you can see basic idea behind this and now we have that now one thing worth noting is you notice how the navigation area takes up the entire 960 pixels while these grids take up less than that remember that I said on grids they apply a 5 pixel gutter on the left and right side so in this case the primary content has 5 pixels of right margin and the sidebar section has 5 pixels of left margin adding up to 10 pixels and that's your gutter. In this case navigation doesn't have anything and that's because we haven't applied a class. So if you want it to receive that go ahead and add a class of the full width grid 24 and then at that point it'll be bound to that container area. So now let's say within our primary content area we want to have uh, three inner columns so a three column grid so I can do div if we want to separate the primary content into three grids we need to make sure that this is easily divisible by 18 so 18 divided by 3 would be 6 so I'll do grid 6 and we're gonna have three of those and we'll just say column now you'll see that one is falling on to the bottom and how come is that and that's because it's still applying those margins so what you can do in these cases is you can apply there's a list of helper classes so if we go back into the style sheet you'll see that you have the alpha and the omega class and what alpha does is it just sets the left margin to zero and omega is the opposite alpha omega so watch what happens if we were to also apply right here we did alpha for the first one and then we applied omega to the second one and now if we come back to our project those are taking up the correct space so that's something you want to be careful of with children elements make sure you take advantage of the alpha and omega classes but now what we can do is let's come back and we'll say and we'll just hard code this in grid 6 background yellow height 400 pixels and now you can see very easily we're able to make all of these amazing layouts that would have taken a good bit of work before. So that is basically all you need to know with the 960 grid system. Uh, there's some different layouts here, but don't let these confuse you. It's just applying widths. There's also push and pull classes, and what that will do is it'll set a position to relative, and it'll also push them over by the width of one grid. So I'm sorry, prefix and suffix. So we may go over that in this lesson, but you can build an entire website with the 960 framework without having to worry about these, possibly. All right, so now that you have this under your belt, let's go ahead and work on our actual layout. So let's go back into index.html, and we will begin applying the necessary classes. So we know right off the bat that our header area, and if you want to go back into our project, our header area needs to have this wrapper because it's a 24 column grid but remember how we noted that these backgrounds need to extend for the entire width of the screen well in that case we can't just do one single wrapper around our website because then any backgrounds would be cut off so the answer is to do multiple backgrounds 
or I'm sorry, multiple wrapping divs. So we'll begin with our header, and I'm going to apply a class of container24, as we learned before. So now if we go into our project, now the reason why we're not seeing any change whatsoever here is only because we're using some of the HTML5 elements. And because they're so new, many of the browsers haven't applied default styling within the browser style sheet. If you're unaware, by default, all browsers have this default style sheet. And that's why when you use a heading one tag, without any styling at all, it'll be larger and the font will be bold. And this is the browser's default styling. However, for the HTML5 elements, some browsers haven't applied any yet. So we need to explicitly state that that header element needs to be a display block. And what most people do is you go through all of your all of your new HTML5 elements. So you'd say section, article, footer, nav, etc. We'll keep it like that for now. And now when I set it to block, you'll see that that pushes up and that is 960 pixels and that'll center perfectly. But now the lower area isn't working. So we need to go ahead and take care of those as well. So the next step is to come down and you see our banner area? Well, we know the banner wrap is going to have that dotted background. If we come in here, the banner wrap will have this dotted background right here. So that cannot be centered. All I want is the inner contents to be centered. And that's why we have this banner right here. So I'm going to apply a class, again, of container24. And now if we come back to our project, you'll see that that has been centered as well. Let's come back and let's do the footer here. Class equals container 24. And now if we scroll to the bottom, you'll see that that section is centered as well. So most of the time, you can get away with applying a single container class. But like I said, when you have these multiple background areas, you need to be a little bit trickier with the way you do it. So if we come back, you can see the main area has the same issue. So we'll go to main. Let's also apply the container 12. I'm sorry, the container 24. And there we go. So now we have a perfectly centered website, except for the very bottom. There we go. So now we need to take care of the columns that we have. As you can see, if we zoom out, the primary section, I'll hide the grid, has one set, and the aside is pushed to the right. So let's measure this out. We have one column, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So primary content needs to be a 15 column grid. So we'll go ahead and add that in right now. There we go. Class equals grid 15. All right, and then let's go back to the aside. And that one, we have a separator, so we need to be careful about that. And this is where we can take advantage of one of the prefix classes that I went over. So let's count this anyways. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we're going to use the prefix one class. So if we come back, let me see if I can find our code beautifier. And if we go to prefix one, what that will do is it'll simply apply padding left to give it more breathing room. All right, so let's go in here and let's go to our aside class and we'll say class equals grid eight. Now we had nine, but we're going to do grid eight and then apply left padding equal to one column. So we can also apply prefix one. And the only other thing I want to do is make sure I apply the aside element as well to make sure that that's displayed as a block level element. And now if I scroll down, there you go. You can see that we have our two columns. So it's that easy to work with the 960 framework. Let's see what else we should do. If we scroll to the bottom, you'll remember that we have these three columns. So we don't even need to add this up. We know that if we're working with the 960 grid and it's separated into three columns, we can do 24 divided by three is eight, which means each one of these sections needs to receive a class of grid eight. So we can do that right now. Scroll to the bottom and here, do class equals grid eight. Same here. And then we have one more, so we'll apply it right here. So let's see how that turns out. So I'll refresh the page, and now when I scroll down, 
you'll see that we've created our three columns without having to really write any width or floats. It's all done for us. Let's come back, and if we scroll to the top, it's important to remember that you're not bound to the 960. So if you want to manually type in widths and floats, you can do that as well. They're simply helper classes if you need them. So let's do a couple more really quickly. We'll grab this navigation area, and we want it to take up pretty much all the way up to here. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So why don't we go and apply that to our navigation area. Class equals grid 17. So now that's been floated to the left and you can see that the other two areas pop up as well. At this point we can go into our form and I'll zoom out just a tad and we can say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, or we can just do the remainder. So 17 from 24 is going to be another 7, correct? So we'll come down to the form and say class equals grid 7. There you go. So the reason why this isn't jumping up is because of this social networking area. But we're going to later take advantage of absolute positioning to put that where we want, which will then make this one shoot up to the right. And if you want a quick example of that, we can come back to head social and we'll say style. We'll just hard code it in. Position absolute. And now you can see once that is absolutely positioned, the form will float up to the right like we want it to. Now, do you notice how when we have all of these floated elements, you'll see that the heading jumps up like you can see right there. So if it helps, why don't we come in and at the end we'll apply a background color to our main. I'm going to apply overflow hidden just to make sure it contains its floats as well. The main section looks fine. We have our primary content and our sidebar. But then let's also go and apply some styling to the banner. So we'll say banner background color is green. And strangely it appears that the form which is not part of the banner is being included within it. So what you want to do in those cases is make sure that you clear any floats that come before your element. So here we're both. And that means clear anything that's floated to the left and anything that's floated to the right. And now you can see that it clears accordingly. Okay, and that's all we're going to do here. We're not taking too much advantage of the 960 framework, but it's still given us a really helpful way to begin constructing our layout. Now you'll see here again how this appears to be connected. All you need to do is come back and we're going to rewrite this later. We go to site info, clear both that's going to push that onto its own line. And the problem is, when you float all of these three elements, it takes them out of the regular flow of the document slightly. Not That's not 100% accurate, but it'll work for this case. And so the, this will pop up to the first spot it can fit, which is right there. So when you say clear both, you say take all the floats above it and make sure that this comes below any of those floats. That's one way to get around it. All right, so that's been your introduction to the 960 framework. And next lesson, we're really going to dig into building this layout and we're going to do all of the CSS. So I'll see you then. Bye-bye.